Coming up next on Adventurer, a Nobel winning physicist tells us what it's like to win the world's most coveted prize. More when we return. Welcome back to Adventurer, the show where people truly push their lives to the limits. No talking heads here, just the real deals. I'm your host, Jim Clash. On past shows, we've had Olympic medalists, Indy 500 winners, astronauts, and Everest summiteers. Today, we have someone a little bit different. Dr. Frank Wilczek won the prestigious Nobel Prize in 2004 for his work with quarks in particle physics, talking about pushing the limits of thinking. Dr. Wilczek, thank you so much for coming on. It's an honor. You know, we've had all kinds of people on the show, but never a nuclear physicist who's won the Nobel Prize. I guess first, tell me what it was like when you heard that you won the most prestigious prize in the world. Well, it started with a cold shower, actually. I uh, had been anticipating that this might happen for several years and uh, knew when the prize was going to be announced, uh, which this that year was six in the morning. Uh, in Eastern, Sweden? Eastern time. Yeah. yeah, it's at noon in Sweden right, at six right. in the morning Eastern time. So I thought if there was going to be a call, it would not be before six o'clock. Uh, I hadn't been able to sleep, so at five o'clock I finally decided to uh, make the best of a bad situation and uh, take a shower so I'd be ready in case the announcement <laughs> came at six. But then uh, at 11 after five, uh, my wife came in with the telephone. We have a mobile phone. Right. She came in with the telephone and said, um, there's a woman calling with a beautiful voice. She says she's from Sweden and wants to talk to you. And you're dripping? Uh, I got out of the shower. <laughs> I decided to take the call. Yeah, I decided yeah. to take the call. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, I uh, didn't dry off or uh, uh, attempt to put on clothes or anything like that. I just and uh, called and that was it. And I gave Betsy the thumbs up sign. It's probably one of the most <laughs> mailing uh, feelings anyone could ever have. It was extraordinary. Now, another thing I didn't know was that uh, it's not just a matter of they call up and uh, tell you you won the Nobel Prize, congratulations, goodbye. It's not that way at all. They started to tell me about the practical arrangements, how I should talk to the press, and then several of my friends in Sweden wanted to congratulate. And so this went on for uh, probably half an hour talking to uh, eight or ten people. Uh, and I never had, the, or during all that time, I was just dripping wet standing in the shower. But of That's course, I was kind of in another state of consciousness. That's a <laughs> great story. How has the, the prize changed your life? Well, it's enriched it. And it's made, opened up many new opportunities. People are... Uh, see me as a spokesman for physics. I could get to tell people about the wonderful work that our community does. Uh, it's had many opportunities to travel, writing books, mm -hmm. and uh, getting bigger advances. <laughs> and and, and the, you guys, it was the three of you won it together. And, yes. And, and it was $1.3 million, so you shared it three ways. So, so you yes. had about $430,000, something like That's that? That's right. What did you do with the money? Oh, put it in mutual funds, the Good thing man. you're supposed to do. <laughs> Hope they were low, low risk, low, 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 low No low in the mutual Good. funds. <laughs> and they've done very well, so I'm pleased with that. In, in, in layman's terms, just tell me, I mean, here I, I read about what the prize was for. Uh, it says, for the discovery of asymptotic freedom in the theory of strong interaction. Right. Tell me what that is in layman's well, terms. There are four fundamental forces of nature. I'm going to oversimplify, but okay. a little bit. I'm going to right. tell outright lies. The uh, four basic interactions, two of which have been known for a long time and have had beautiful theories for a long time. That, that's gravity, which uh, everyone knows what that right, is, sure. and has had a beautiful theory since the 17th century with Newton's mm -hmm. laws, and uh, a really beautiful theory since the early 20th century with Einstein's general relativity. Right. And then there's uh, electromagnetism, which is a theory that covers all the phenomena of electricity, magnetism, uh, optics also, because we know light is a form mm -hmm. of electricity and magnetism, and chemistry basically. It covers. Right. So it's a huge subject. Uh, Nat had a beautiful theory in the 19th century called Maxwell's equations. And then in the 
early part of the 20th century when physicists started exploring deep inside atoms, in particular the so-called atomic nucleus, right. which is the, the core center, of the atom right. where all the mass, almost all the mass and all the positive charges, uh, they found they couldn't account for how nuclei behave, for what goes on inside the nuclei in terms of those forces. Uh, there were two more forces had to be introduced. Uh, one is called the weak force, and I won't talk about that. That's, okay. that's not what we did. <laughs> and then there's something called the strong force, which is really what holds the nucleus together, makes it so small. It's a very powerful force, the strongest in nature, um, but acts only over short distances. And uh, it was very mysterious. The great uh, uh, Freeman Dyson was a well-known theoretical physicist right, in 1970, right. sort of surveyed the subject and the sort of scattered puzzling mm -hmm. facts that were known about it and said there wouldn't be a proper theory of the strong interactions for a hundred years. Wow. Well, three years later, <laughs> we, uh, we managed to figure out what the right equations are for the strong interaction and very important how to prove them, how to check them experimentally that they really were right. And so that's, that, that's, what it, that's what the prize was for, right. Okay, that's fabulous. We're going we're gonna, to, uh, part two, we're going to talk a little bit more about that and some other things, but uh, thanks for coming in. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Again, Dr. Frank Wilczek. I'm Forbes adventurer Jim Clash. For part two of our interview with Dr. Wilczek, where we talk about Edward Teller, the father of the hydrogen bomb, Albert Einstein, and dark matter, tune into the Forbes Video Network. And thanks for watching.